everyone! Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to use Blender to make 3D models for printing for cosplay parts. Specifically, this one will focus on flat-backed little pieces like buttons, decals, crests, such as I used here on my Red Mage costume and on Felix from Fire Emblem. As you can see, they're all flat but have raised details. And what I'm going to try and make today is this crest here for a costume that I'm working on. Now as a disclaimer, I'm not a great 3D modeler, I'm not super experienced, I probably am doing this all the wrong way, but this has worked for me in the past, so I thought it might prove useful for some people. Okay, so we've loaded up Blender, and this is the intro splash screen. You'll want to select a new general file here, and you'll be presented with these three objects. We won't need those, so we will delete those in a mo. Just a quick note, I'm using a Windows computer with mouse and keyboard, and the mouse importantly has a scroll wheel, so I will be referencing those, but if you need alternate controls, you'll be able to find those online. Now, as with a lot of programs, the left mouse button is select and a drag select, and then the right mouse button brings up various menus. The scroll wheel will scroll in and out, and if you press down on the scroll wheel and then move the mouse, it will rotate your view, which is really important for 3D modeling. It's important to note, as you're moving your viewpoint around, this bit up here also moves. This shows the axes, and if you keep an eye on it, it will kind of show you which side of the object you're looking at and where you are orientated. You can also click on it to move to a specific viewpoint. So we're going to go to a top-down view. To get started, we want to find the picture. Obviously we've got it here, but we need to find the file here on the desktop. And you just drag and drop it into Blender, which will create it as what's known as an empty which means we start making our object, and as a warning, this is where I'm possibly using the wrong techniques. You want to make sure you're in layout, and then go add mesh. This will create a proper 3D object. So if I pull this back out into a, a more isometric viewpoint quickly, you'll see that the objects are real when I go add mesh, and then let's go for a monkey, which is the silly shape that Blender has put in. And as you can see, we can move around it to see every side of it. And then once you've got an object, this is your curve control panel down the side. You've got the selection box for selecting objects. You've got moving for moving objects along these axes. And then rotate and scale. Generally, I'll keep mine in selection box because you can actually access the rest through hotkeys. For example, the hotkey for move is G for grab. And then you don't have to keep clicking between the tools. We're going to delete that, and now we're going to add a cylinder. I find the cylinder is a really useful base to start with. Now, this has made a cylinder, and before we click anywhere else, you'll notice there's this little box down on the screen, which if we expand, it'll give us a few options. The most important one is vertices or sides. You want it to have quite a number of sides so you've got more points to edit with. 32, 36 is probably plenty for what we need right now. And now you're ready to click off and you can see that our cylinder has been created. Now we've got our first object, we want to select it and alter it to the shape we need. Now if you see it's a plain grey at the mo, but if you click on it it'll get an orange selection line around it. So we want to select that and go into modelling. So this will let us play around with the object. Now if you see up here you've got three options. Vertex select, which lets you select individual points, edge select, for individual edges, and face select for the flat sides. For these we're mostly going to use vertex select. Now an important thing to know with 3D modelling is, well, it's 3D. So we can drag and select points, it's fine, we can see that one, we can select it and move that one. However, it's only moving that one at the moment, that's fine. If we want to select multiple points, we go to you know, select the whole thing with a box. It has only selected the front facing parts, it won't select the back parts. Which means that if you try to change the whole model, it'll leave some of it behind like that. A lot of what we're going to be doing to combat that is going up here and finding viewport shading. 
Now it's usually on solid, but we want it on wireframe mode. As you can see, that's made it translucent and you can see every point, including the ones that uh, would be hidden by it. Now if you select the whole thing, it selects the whole model, every point we see. So that's the best one for editing in, in this kind of case. Now we're going to change back to our top-down viewpoint and we're going to start by making a petal. And the way to think about it is, I've got these five petals, each one is a bit like a squished oval, and an oval is a bit like a squished circle. So if we're starting with a circle, we can make that petal shape quite easily. So again, in vertex select, we want to select, in this top-down view, drag a box over a couple of them, because we're selecting what looks like one at a time, but we'll actually be selecting the top and bottom points, which is important for moving them evenly together to change the whole cross section. So you click and you'll select one, whereas if you drag, you'll select both. Then we're going to go to grab G and move it. And what you can do is grab and move every point individually, which is fine. Or if you want, go up here and there's proportional editing mode. When you turn that on, you do a grab and you'll get this circle to appear. Nice big circle. Scroll wheel makes it bigger or smaller. Basically means everything in the circle will also be affected by you moving it. You move it out and the other ones will join with it a bit, which makes it a nicer, smoother shape. As you can see, changing the size changes how it looks. It's an easy way to make a kind of egg shape if you want. Obviously no need to go quite that extreme here, but if we bring the circle quite nice and small, it can just smooth out the, uh, the corners a little bit, and it means that you don't have to move every single point individually. So we're just going to continue doing that until we're happy with the overall shape. Now as these are quite organic shapes, I'm not being too precise with it. If you're making something with more geometric, rigid shapes, you might want to use more basic shapes, such as a, a cube base more often, and use the grid behind it to make sure that you get things looking a bit neater. Now the bit up top here, we don't have to worry about too much it's going to be hidden by other parts, so as long as it's not too in the way, we can leave that kind of as is. We definitely don't want to risk parts not intersecting at all, because we don't want there to be holes. So there we have our nice petal shape. As you can see, it's really long at the moment, but we can deal with that later. And it's obviously got some quite firm edges, but as this print is going to be quite small, they won't look as bad when it's printed. Or if you want to make something bigger, you can use a cylinder with more edges as a base so that it's all in all a bit smoother. Now, obviously we want five ultimately, so we're going to duplicate this. Control C, Control V, as long as you're in layout, will duplicate it. And then use G to grab, and R in this top-down viewpoint will rotate it just in the views we can see. And then just grab it roughly into place, and uh, make five in total. Now, if we want, we can go back into modeling and just look at each one, make them a bit different because they are meant to be organic shapes. So now we've got our five petals. They're a bit lumpy in places and they've got this weird inner edge, but none of that's gonna be too much of a problem. I'm just going to group them and join them all together and then just move them out of the way. It's not important really, and if they're not going to be any way, you could leave them as they are, but sometimes I like to not have my work area too cluttered. So the next bit I'm going to do is the leaves around the outside. I'm going to use exactly the same method of making a cylinder, modifying it, and duplicating it, and I'll move those bits out of the way as well when they're done. As you can see, this method is quite nice and quick and, you know, you can...
And as the cylinder is nice and versatile, I'm going to use it for these little spiked bits that are on the leaves and petals, and just make them slightly taller than the other underlying bits, so they're a bit of a raised detail. Since they're much simpler shapes, we can just use one cylinder to make all of those spikes and just give them a cast join center, which again will be hidden when we put the later details in. The second one I'm going to make a bit smaller, just because these spikes are a bit smaller, and yeah, that's those sections added really quickly and simply. I'm going to have to upload this in two parts, so please do check the second half of this video for finishing this off and how to actually export it for print.